In this session, we're going to be looking at index numbers. Now, when we're considering index numbers, all we're really looking at is by how much has the price of a particular product changed over time with reference to some particular base year. So, for example, in the year 2000, a particular product might have cost £100. Whereas now, in 2011, that same product costs maybe, maybe excuse me, £170. So we're just looking at that change in price from 2000 up to 2011 and describing it as an index number. When we're calculating index numbers, All we look at is the value in any given year. So divided by the value in our base year. And we multiply by 100. So, very straightforward calculations. We'll look at an exercise to see how this works and what our index number tells us. So, we have the following price information available for our product from the years 2004 to 2010. Now, we're asked, taking 2004 as the base year, calculate the index for each year. If 2004 is our base year, then 2004 will have the index 100. So our base year always has index number 100. We want to calculate then the index for 2005. So it's just going to be the actual price in 2005 divided by the price in our base year. So in 2005, then, our index will be 66 over 60 and multiplied by 100. So that gives us an index of 110. All we are saying here is that between 2004 and 2005, the price of this product increased by 10%. If we calculate the index for 2006, that will be 68 divided by the price in our base year. So 68 divided by 60 and multiplied by 100 gives us 113. Our index for 2007 will be 74 divided by 60 and multiplied by 100 gives us 123. 2008, our price is 75 divided by the price in our base year, which was 60, and multiplied by 100 gives us 125. In 2009, our index will be 80 divided by 60, multiplied by 100 gives us 133. And finally, 2010. Our price is 86 divided by 60 multiplied by 100 is 143. So what our index number tells us then is that the price of the product has increased by 43% from 2004 to 2010. And that's all that's involved in our straightforward index numbers calculations. Now, one of the important uses of index numbers is that we can use it to compare, perhaps, sales revenue for a number of years. Now, bear in mind, if we're looking at sales revenue for the same product over 10 years, one of the things that might cause our sales revenue to go up over time is inflation. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean, of course, that our company's performance has improved. So if we're looking at sales in 2010 and sales from 2002, it might be easy to conclude 
that if the sales revenue is higher in 2010, the company's performance has improved. But if there's been a lot of inflation, that is not necessarily the case. And perhaps the only reason our sales revenue has increased is because we've been charging a higher price to reflect inflation. It's not necessarily that we've sold perhaps greater volumes of our product. So we can use index numbers to remove the impacts of inflation from our sales revenue figures. And then we have a more meaningful comparison for year-on-year -year sales figures. What we call this is adjusting for price movements. If we want to calculate the price adjusted figure for a year, Then another straightforward calculation, it'll just be our actual figure for the actual year, so the year that we're looking at, and we multiply by the RPI, or the index in our reference year, and divide by our RPI, or our index, in the actual year. So when I say RPI, what I'm really referring to here is our index. So again, if we have a look at another example to see how this works and what it tells us. We are given then for the years 2005 to 2010 the sales figures <clears throat> for a particular company. We're also given our RPI, our retail price index, for the relevant years. Okay, so 2005 up to 2010. Now we want to calculate our sales figures for the six years in terms of the year 2010. So this is our reference year. We can see that our sales figures have increased between 2005-2010. But what we want to calculate is, is this a real increase in our sales revenue? Or is the increase only due to things like inflation? So, our reference year is 2010. We can calculate then our price adjusted figures. of the previous years. So starting with 2005, our price adjusted sales are just the actual sales for 2005, 240,000, multiplied by our RPI in the reference year. So our RPI in 2010 was 217.9. divided by our RPI in the actual year we're looking at, 2005. So that's 188.9. What this figure here is telling us is what was the increase in prices between 2005 and 2010. And we're adjusting our sales revenue figure for that overall increase. So when we look, work that through, we should get our adjusted sales figure, 276,845. <clears throat> we can do the same thing for 2006. So actual sales, 2006, were 250,000. Multiply by our RPI for 2010 and divide by our RPI for 2006, which was 193.4. You work that through, you should get 281,670. For 2007, our actual sales were 257,000. 
multiply by our RPI for our reference year 2010 divided by the RPI for 2007 which is 201.6 and we get 277,779 going on our adjusted sales for 2008 actual sales 264,000 multiplied by our RPI for 2010 divided by our RPI for 2008 And we get 274,193. Finally then, in 2009, our adjusted revenue will be 289, multiplied by 217.9, and divided by 210.1. And that gives us 299,729. We could do the calculation for 2010, but because 2010 is our reference year, and there won't actually be any adjustment to the 2010 sales figure. So we're just multiplying by the RPI in our reference year, divided by the RPI in 2010. And if we do this, then, it gives us a more meaningful comparison of our sales figures year on year. So we can see, when we remove the impact of inflation, have our sales figures increased over this six-year period?